Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, number, what is this? 461, holy crap. Uh, here on this St. Patrick's Day on March 17, 2015. I'm here, Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on Twitter from the Pittsburgh Mayhem Studios, uh, just in the Beachview neighborhood. And that will be important later in the show as we talk about certain people. Also with us, uh, coming from Poughkeepsie, New York, it's Mad Mike. I'm still the boss of this place, bitches, because I didn't cancel my Patreon from last week. That's One right. Dollar. You are a boss. This is this is definitely. Uh, I got correct. my sun of shades on because I run this shit, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is just for the intro. Hi. Hi. <laughs> also with us, we got a very um, uh, a, a crazy crew with us tonight, led by Mad Mike, of course. Uh, but also joining us as I get the right button here, coming all the way from California. It's uh, Grand El Zul. But no, no, I'm just, I'm just a big fan of his. Oh, I'm sorry. Does my attire offend you, Sor? Do I need to change out of this? Um, Do you have a John Cena shirt I can wear? <laughs> or I, I, I have a Bailey shirt, but then, then I wouldn't have a shirt, so we can't give it to you. No, we shouldn't do that. No. Okay, I'll, I'll take this off so no one. Our, like... Alex Garza joining us from power to the sparks.com and I know you got a lot going on there uh we'll, we'll we'll give you a full plug later but real quick like what what's something that everybody should check out what is power to the sparks for those that haven't checked you guys out all right power to the sparks is uh let's see my little pro wrestling website hat that I like to wear uh I like I'm promoting uh, various design services from uh, branding, uh, create a logo, uh, flyers, DVD covers like I, I was doing for a while with RWA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, just kind of a, a semi-typical site in some cases, some news, some reviews. But the big thing, which I can talk about an hour later, is Pickham's League, which was inspired by some of my friends over at the Chikara 101 forums, where you get to... Pick, if you pick the winners for these different up wrestling events coming up, you'll score points, and then you win some prizes. Like uh, David K won this past month, and actually won a uh, free download through Sorgatron Media. Right. As if you need another way to win a free download from Sorgatron Media. <laughs> uh, good times. <laughs> Hey! Oh <laughs> uh, no! I'm always happy to help out. Know. It's a fun thing going on there. Uh, if you want to get on the pickups of Power to the Sparks, also joining us. Oh, I didn't check with your title this week. I, <laughs> he is at Wrestle Genius on the Twitters. I know him as Shireman though. <laughs> Who, who's Shireman? <laughs> uh, I, I don't have websites. <laughs> I don't have a website. I'm just a internet know-it-all and. I'm here to talk about wrestling with you losers today. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank, thanks, coach. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, uh, like I said, this is Wrestling Mayhem Show. We talk pro wrestling. We have with fans, and uh, some, maybe some of us have done. Some of us have been <clears throat> employed by the WWE at one point or another. Um, maybe maybe someone, someone here who's wearing their merch. Hi. Mm, mm. I love that you may have the same type of future endeavor letter as guys like vince russo anyway but you won't get locked yeah, out of your know. website um but anyways um you can check us out wrestling mayhem show.com where you can find out more and subscribe to us of course please follow us on the social media mayhem show on the twitters wrestling mayhem show on facebook google plus all that kind of stuff uh also you can subscribe to us on itunes youtube stitcher spreaker iheart radio audio and video formats uh so you don't miss an episode and it really helps and please rate us rate us and share it share it with your friends and that's the easy freeway but if you really are getting some value out of this you can also drop a line to our patreon at patreon.com slash 
Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'll get to that in a moment. But you can also communicate with us. Communicate. It's communication, guys. There's the there's the uh, uh, hotline that we got one from our friend Boo Diggity later here Woo! in the show at four one two two zero six WMS zero. If you're not good with the righty words and know how to op- operate a phone at the same time, and you can also drop us a line with the righty words at that email address. Good time. Good time. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I'm not sure if Alex is not muted after that one because I don't think it, his lips did not match what I heard uh, from everybody else. So, um, and speaking of the Patreon, like I said, you can go to patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow. If you get value from the show, want to support it, and get, and hopefully we get enough of you. We're not even going to pursue advertisers. I, that's serious. If we get enough people to support this show and, and support the network, we're, we're not even going to bother getting them except for our good friends at Slice on Broadway, but there's a reason for that. Um, that support us in other non uh, monetary ways. Hashtag uh, pizza. Hashtag eight pizza. Reasons a week for that sword. That's right. Eight, Has- eight reasons a week. Oh, what? Okay. Eight. Slices of pizza. Sorry. Eight slices of pizza. That's right. There you go. Um, but you you can support us just like our friends that have uh, for a good while now, uh, including, um, of course, thewrestlingrevolution.com. Go check out their great forum over there. But I think they were the, the first Patreon. Um, <laughs> and Matt Carnes, like, he's got a message. He's going to get started on the big board for uh, tonight's Mayhem Mania. Um, sure. Also, uh, of course, uh, Bo Diggity. Woo! Uh, apparently mad mike is still a boss yeah he forgot to cancel his patreon and uh um, okay keep it till wrestlemania sorg okay keep it till mania keep it till mania yeah it really mania. you're dedicating to that you're gonna put that keep money back in the show you've been a you host know like the hmm. you know why because i like saying i'm a fucking boss <laughs> Hey, put it back in. Put it back in, man. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Um, and of course, we do. We use that money to 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 improve the show for one thing. Pay for things like our domains and and, and everything like that to keep it running. So uh, I'm just trying to pay for um, the wife of the show's um, food pictures. <laughs> there you go. She should just start a Patreon for that, huh? <laughs> you should. <laughs> there you go. And also our executive producer at the five dollar level, we get some special perks for that, including meeting Chachi this week. Apparently, is Buddy Landell. Uh, Landell3 on the Twitter. So thank you very, very much for having that much faith uh, in the show to put that forward. Um, so let's get into it with our stories, our topics of this week, our, our discussion. Um, first of all, uh, our first topic, has thing mattered? Uh, WWE reminds me that it reminds all of us that he's not the crow, which is good because I think some people might be a little confused when he first popped up there. So. And it really, what I wanted to kind of uh, talk with you guys, we're so close to WrestleMania. We had the appearance this week on, on Monday Night Raw, side by side with Randy Orton. Um, and I think there was a lot of re-education that needed to happen. We had, you know, it's been 15 years since he was in, uh, can I say wrestling that mattered? This- um, it's been 15 years since since he's wrestled. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but no, I, but seriously. Remember, remember when everyone thought, hey, where'd RVD go? Ex- exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, but still, the WWE audience doesn't know that he's done anything else. No care, whatever. So we have to remind why we care about him. And regardless, that is WCW and the story there. Like We've had WWE Network to have, be able to tell that story a lot over the last year, for instance. Um, so my question is... For obviously, we know who he is, and 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 the importance of this is kind of negligible. But for the normal WWE fan, do you think they've been educated enough to care about this match? No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, it depends. Like you said, the people like us look at it and they say, "Well, this is awesome, right?" I mean, Sting is is coming into a world where we never thought he would be before. Um, but I think to your average, let's say, 10, 12-year-old who's watching this show religiously, they have no idea who Sting is. And, and I think that, you know, I, I understand why he's on a limited schedule. A, they don't want to pay him. B, he's like 100 years old. He would fall apart if he was actually, you know, doing anything. He's not 100? You don't think so, no, Mike? No, I don't. He wrestled full-time in TNA. True. No, I think I think they're not showing him that much to keep the mystique of Sting. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think there's, there's the, that's one of the upsides to it, but I, I just I don't think people have any idea who he is. I don't think the average fan who's who's not you know 
maybe of a certain age has any idea who he is. And I, I, I guess that's by design, but I'm, I'm not sure they've handled this real great. Um, on the other hand, if he was on every week for two 15 minute segments, we'd be bitching about that too. So, <laughs> that's true. You know what I mean? I, I'm not sure there's any way to win. Right, right, right. How much, you know, how much, how much can you make somebody care? It's one thing like Hulk Hogan came back and say, he built this company. Right. Uh, but Sting say, Hey, he built this other company that closed down. I mean, it's not a great story for your your good guy, right? That came back and fought the NWO and said he failed. You know, I mean, it's it's just so so strange. I mean, the only yeah, Alex. Okay, Um, I was just thinking, like, kind of on the flip side of it, though. The thing that I do like about how they've been portraying Sting, for all intents and purposes, the one thing they've been pushing since he started, Sting is the vigilante. Right. Sure. The, they're saying, oh, that he failed is only like the weird kayfabe slash storyline way of explaining why WCW folded. Uh, kind of blaming that on NWO and, well, you know, instead of all the other stuff that actually happened. But the point is, he f- was the one, like, he was basically the guy that fought against the NWO. He was the one guy that represented WCW at a time when other other guys were flipping kind of back and forth, you know. Obviously, you had the outsiders from Mm -hmm. WWE to WCW. And, you know, Sting is the guy that stuck around. As they keep kind of pushing it, he was the guy that stuck around until the very end. So to that respect, I think they've been doing fine. As far as introducing him to new fans, um, I think as long as they've been the way just pushing that – kind of the vigilante thing I think has been working, but I do agree that he should be like around a lot more or at least a bit more than, than he has been. But then again, you have a world champion who's hardly around. So that's it's sort of, know, it's kind of the state of thing. In, in WWE yeah. anyway, is part time is just how every, yeah. all the big yeah. guys work nowadays. You know? I mean, I think that, yeah, I think they they made a tactical error with what they're doing with Sting, mm-hmm. um, because they're introducing him as this guy who was one of the mainstays of WCW. Like, uh, they 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 basically cut off Sting's history right before he joined the Wolfpack. Like they're trying to they're trying like. There's a new Aliens movie that's coming out that's going to be a sequel of Aliens 2. Yes. That is what WWE is trying to do with Sting. They're trying to say, hey, remember when Sting was fighting the NWO and they just said, ah, fuck it, and joined the Wolfpack instead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a huge fuck up on on WCW's part. We're not going to do that. We're still going to try and make him the guy who fights against injustice like the authority. And I, I feel like if you're going to do that, and then you're going to try and at the same time say that he stayed in WCW to the very end, so he's going to fight the guy who destroyed WCW, then it should be staying against like Steve Austin or Vince McMahon or The Rock because Triple H was injured when that whole alliance thing happened. Like the invasion, Triple H was out that entire time. He came back in 2002. WCW was already gone. The Alliance had already completely integrated. Chronic was fired. Like, Triple, like, if you actually look back at the time period that they're talking about, Triple H had little or nothing to do with WCW leaving. Sure. Yeah. It's, it, it's, a, it's a retcon of sorts, but, to use a, to use a but, comic term there. They're right. sort of in choosing how they want to portray the past because they control the narrative because you know, it's made up. Um, so I, I, I see your point there and people who, who were through the whole thing sort of understand that, you know, they understand that this is not quite true, I guess. But um, you know, I mean the biggest, I think the biggest impact they show of sting at this point is not necessarily who he is, but that he's, he's, portrayed as this antithesis of what Triple H is today. So he's not the corporate guy. He's this, you know, 
portrayed as this, you know the, the crow vigilante mm-hmm. but I'm, justice I mean, unhinged kind of uh, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that's all fine I guess you know what I mean I, but I don't know a- Eamon makes a great point in the chat room right. uh, he said what they should play up is that um, the guys Sting was trying to fight off the guys that Sting was trying to save WCW from we're Triple H's best friends, right? Scott right. and Kevin Nash right. and Sean Waltman. Exactly, Alex. Uh, oh. I don't remember what I was going to say. That's <laughs> okay. I heard you try to break in <laughs> there. Uh, but I, there was there was one thing I, I wanted to get your guys' takes on because I don't think we've gotten your opinions on what my entryway to Sting that I thought they should have done. Mm-hmm. There was a whole Monday Night War episode. 45 minutes to an hour long about the two mainstays of the Attitude Era, Sting and The Undertaker. Hmm. And, it, like, if if it was Sting and Undertaker, and they just came out with this Monday Night War episode that chronicled, like, the history of Sting and how he was the mainstay in WCW, well, guys like uh, the NWO jumped back and forth. Hulk Hogan came in to foul off the works. Macho Man came in. Minji, all those guys, but Sting was still the constant. Sting was still the guy that fought for WCW no matter what. And then you had The Undertaker. The Undertaker who went through more changes than Madonna, like who who stayed and never left, like never left due to injury like Shawn Michaels, never left due to contract disputes like Bret Hart. He was there the entire time. And Undertaker was the mainstay. Sting was the mainstay. If they shortened that Monday Night War package into a five-minute promo for WrestleMania, you guys would be amped about Sting versus Undertaker. And then we wouldn't have to waste Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. It, what, what you're describing, though, is having, you know, the a logical uh, connection between, you know, these products that the WWE has out there. And that's that's just asking way too much, um, of course. The question is, like, could those two guys have a match? You know, the narrative makes sense. The the you know the the feud makes sense. Could those two guys go out there and put on thirty five minutes or? You don't need to. Whatever. You know, they, yeah, I guess you, maybe, you When was what was the last Mania match that lasted thirty five minutes? Ah, uh, you may. I mean, you make a good point, but I'm just saying, I think the match might not live up to it. I guess is my point. Not necessarily the, the length of the match, but you know, I, I think I think it's entirely possible we're gonna have a huge letdown, a huge stinker here with with st- both Sting's match and fucking the Undertaker's match. I I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Uh, Sting had a lot of really good matches towards the end of his TNA run. Uh, he had a really good match with EC3. He had a really he had a series of really good matches with Bully, with Bully Ray. Um. I think Sting is perfectly fine, especially the kind of style that Triple H wrestles. Triple H does a lot of stall and brawl, so I think that'll be okay. And as far as Taker goes, it's going to be nice to see him in a match where he doesn't get concussed three minutes into it by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> like, like, the reason that Taker match sucked last year is because not only did Taker get concussed, Brock is such a sloppy motherfucker that he kept <laughs> concussing him. No, what what did, did happen? Like, do we know the start point of, of of that? It was very soon into the match. It was very soon, but like, what was it? Was it a, a botched move? Like, what was it? No, a it, suplex? It's just Brock. It's just Brock. <laughs> it's just Brock being Brock. Brock's got a yeah, Brock. Like, yeah, like I mean, Taker's an old guy. I mean, he can go. Yeah, I, yeah. Two years ago, Taker was wrestling six man tag matches against the Shield for fuck's sake. It was the Brothers of Destruction and Daniel Bryan versus the Shield. I mean, that match was a barn burner. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, Eamon, again, God, I hate to keep giving him credit here, but he makes another <laughs> good point. He makes another good point here. If, you know, if Sting and, and Taker were the feud here, how many appearances would you have from these guys? Oh, on please. TV? They, I, I read that too. They built Cena and Rock over a year. The Rock made four appearances. That's true. True, but if neither one of them is making appearances, would no, you? No, but when, when one makes an appearance, the other plays mind games. That's all you need. They're both masters of mind games and light shows and 
Titan Tron. Hey, hey excite yeah, all a, you need. A, a, accepting matches uh through through Titan Tron is very apparently in vogue this year all over the place. So uh I think we're good to go with any of that kind of stuff. So all right, on that note. <laughs> like, I wanna... Honestly, if you had Sting and Taker, I wouldn't want them to be seen in a ring together until Mania, because that's your money shot. Or even maybe that's a little bit. A stare off with the sign behind it on the raw directly before yeah. WrestleMania. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, no, because the money shot is that. the two of them being in the ring at the same time. <laughs> That's true too. That's true too, I guess. Um, or yeah. maybe even they come in, yeah, um, they, they alternate. I, oh, sorry, Alex. That's oh, okay. I finally I remember my point from earlier. because uh, Matt Mike brought up the fact that uh like it, the the question of why Triple H has to be the guy that represents WWE when he wasn't around for the invasion era. But the way I kind of see it, like Triple H is the guy that's still like with the company and not injured all or whatever. Cause uh, I mean, why couldn't Stone Cold do it? Well, he, you hear him every time anyone asks him if he wants to do a match lately, he's been like, Oh, you know, maybe, but <laughs> traditionally he's been like, no, I'm done. Yeah, and yeah. like Rock, because of a combination of injury and just wanting to do film, he's like, no, yeah. yeah. Well, um, the only other, good, so I remember they kept Triple H is also the avatar of Vince McMahon at this. Yeah, point. yeah. I mean, but if they were gonna go wanna, like stalwart WWE guy, yeah. if they didn't want to do Triple H, they could do John Cena. Mm-hmm. A Sting John Cena match would be killer. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Cena's gonna get booed anyway. You might as well have him get yep. booed against a guy making his first appearance <laughs> in a Vince McMahon ring ever. Right. Like right. And then John Cena's kind of the gatekeeper for all these new guys. Yeah. All exactly. Right. I want to get to yeah. some other topics here, but first I want to touch on some stuff going on. Of course, hey, check out PittsburghWrestling.com. We got so much going on. Uh the big release this past week. We mentioned um uh last week the uh Cage of Fury. No, that's not right. I'm just combining a bunch of shows right now. Uh, Cage Cage Combat in Clearfield is the big one here. Uh, a lot of fun at that show. Uh, you can check it out with John McChesney in front of the show against uh, Joseph Brooks. With Justin Labar, you might have heard of him uh, at ringside. I don't know. He loves wearing that neck brace. Um, a good point was that he wore a neck brace after getting pushed six weeks ago. So I don't know. Um, but uh, go I check out. Are very serious. Go right? check out that and so much else. Yes, uh, January jackpot reloaded for the IWC RWA's last show uh, seasons being six. No, actually, it should be uprising. I need to update that. I realize. Um, but also we got a big. Well, one there was a sale. You can check in and new, sign up for the newsletter so you can get a free download, digital download IWC's 100th episode. Jeez, I do that every week. Show, uh, including guys like AJ Styles, Delirious, all kinds of great names on there that you get for free. Just for going to PittsburghWrestling.com, going down to the side here, you see sign up for Sorgatron Media and uh, stick your email address in there, and you'll get that and updates on all kinds of wrestling and what's going on with all these podcasts. And uh, also, we just had a giant, massive IWC back catalog edition. Um, Some guys in there like Necro Butcher, Tito Santana, is in there. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town is very excited because Mia Yim is on two of these shows. Uh, Superfly <laughs> Jimmy Snuka, a friend of the show that we've had on a while ago. Sarah Del Rey, we've been talking about lately. Delirious. Uh, ladder matches. Abyss. Baseball fields. Sexual harassment. Ric Flair. All kinds of stuff on this. The old Super Indies with guys like Jerry Lynn and uh, Davey Richards on there before they were big, big stars. Um, and, and, and Alex Shelley. Um, Matt Seidel. You know, Evan Bourne is on this as well. Go to PittsburghWrestling.com. Check out all the fun stuff. And those titles I was just mentioning, uh, the last few there, the, the back catalog, 3 to $5 each. You can check those out. Um, so please, PittsburghWrestling.com. Support that. Supports the show. Supports the network. And supports indie wrestling. So let's get to topic number two. Uh, this I wanted to talk about. Without Brock, it seems like we've having a uh, mid-card rise. It seems like the internet... To me, the Intercontinental and the U.S. titles have had more importance than they have uh, ever. Like they feel like they are that secondary uh, uh, thing. Since we are down up to one title, it's only so many people can occupy that space, especially when we only have a champ- champion like once every three months at this point with Brock Lesnar. 
have they done a good job? Do we feel like you know those championships mean something again? At least in storyline, uh, Mike. I know you're probably going to disagree with me whether the IC title feels important when it's been a hot potato. Oh no, I love the IC title gimmick. Um, I, I, I just don't. I think the US title and the IC title mean more than they have uh, in years, mm-hmm. like in a very long time. But I don't think it's because our we have an absentee champion. Because we have a representative for our champion every week. I think it's because of who they have in the main event. Because uh, Rollins is still kind of lukewarm. Like as a main heel. Mm-hmm. Because he get, he's with the authority. But, he, damn, but damn it, he is trying so damn hard. Oh, You he, have to give him a lot he's of credit. Doing the best he's, been, he's, given. he's been carrying shows. Like yes. entire shows, SmackDown and Raw, on him being the heel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he eventually becomes the corporate champion, he's going to be great. Mm-hmm. But right now, he's there. He's kind of being kept on the back burner, like just waiting and holding and waiting and holding and waiting and holding. Um, but because people are still so down on Roman Reigns, uh, like I, I forget if I said this on a previous show or on a wrap up or wherever I said it because I do so many of these things. Um, I think we're getting Cena as the U.S. champion. And Daniel Bryan as the IC champion simply because we're getting Roman Reigns as world champion. Like, I, because it's kind of like a palate cleanser. It's like, hey, listen, we know you guys aren't enthused about this, but Cena's going to be holding the mid card belt, so it's going to mean something. Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan's going to hold the mid card belt, so you know it means something. Like, I, th- I think that's kind of what they're trying to do. It's yeah, it's kind of an odd switch here. You know, when, about two years ago, we were complaining because the World Heavy, when the titles were still not combined, there the World Heavyweight Championship, we were com- we were complaining because sort of mid card guys were holding this world title. Now we have a guy who's sort of a mid card guy that's going to hold the world title, and arguably main event guys are probably going to have these sort of. Uh, menial titles <laughs> it's, it's it's a weird it, it's su- such a weird flip all of a sudden mm-hmm. um with this but I, i'm not sure reigns is gonna have a long run with this belt um because you almost feel like a double turn sort of thing is about to happen here I, 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 i'm not sure I, i'm probably giving creative a little too much credit with this but <laughs> you know you almost feel like Reigns is going to, you know, they're they're going to let the crowd turn on Reigns and have Rollins flip, you know? I, 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 could you see a scenario where that happens, where he cashes in? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, would have, you would have to switch face. Brock Lesnar, uh, Paul okay. Heyman, and, and he's not a face because he's a face character. He's a face because they hate Roman Reigns so much that whoever beats him is going, going to go over. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Alex. I want to get your opinion, and we'll go to some comments here in the chat as well. Maybe. Um. Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, you want some hangout stuff? Anyways, the uh, IC and uh, US titles. Uh, and Amon should kind of hand on this in the chat, Mike. I, I personally, I I love the Intercontinental title situation hitting into Mania. Mm-hmm. I love that they've essentially brought back the twenty four seven rule for the hardcore tile since the, the two are uh, you know, <laughs> kind of in a way, uh, right? <laughs> I love the I love the ladder right? I love the uh I do like the ladder bass they're doing, but I'm realizing <clears throat> it just occurred to me this like it just occurred to me last night that Stardust is in the ladder match and Gold Dust is in the battle royal. And so now I kind of understand what what uh, Eamon was saying before about because I definitely would have preferred to see that match actually at Mania, but mm-hmm. since they're kind of doing their own things with that, but the guys that are in each of those matches are awesome. As for the U.S. title, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm I'm very split on that because I think it's kind of cool that oh. Like over a little over t- like what eleven years after he won his first like you know his first WWE title belt at a WrestleMania by being Big Show, he's going back for that same belt. There's kind of a cool thing in that, but it's kind of like 
if if he wins, is that really going to elevate the world or elevate the U.S. title, or is it just going to kind of mess everything up with uh, the uh, with with Rusev's push? Because mm-hmm. it's like I I I, kinda, I do kind of feel like if Rusev's going to lose the match, it probably should be at WrestleMania, just so that's a big talking point. Right, but I can understand I, like where I, people are concerned that it's that this match is against Cena. I feel like it. I, I, it can't I happen can't, anywhere I, else but WrestleMania. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. I don't know. I, I the answer to, your, to both your questions, I think, is yes. Like, <laughs> I think it's going to elevate the hell out of the U.S. title, but I also think it's going to kind of kill Rusev. <laughs> like, okay. um, uh, so, but just imagine, just in case, what if Rusev won? Like, clean. No, where I'm does he go saying, from here you need saying. to bring in at oh, that point man. you'll need to bring in hulk hogan uh ronald and ronald reagan himself in order to uh beat R- rusev <gasps> <laughs> arnold schwarzenegger yes and a bald eagle. he's already in a bald eagle yes i mean Curtis. no no you need arnold schwarzenegger coming into wrestlemania riding a bald eagle to beat rusev after he's just beat john cena in order to even wait he's from austria yeah, but like, he's an just, citizen, just say Rusev wins. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> he's been in America for forty years. I mean, come on. that's true. That's true. He's, he's a governor of California. That didn't governor go badly at all. <laughs> uh, Commando. From- <laughs> Um, how about Sylvester Stallone? Let's do that one. Um, anyways, well, that would be good too if Sylvester Stallone just showed up and punched him out. Just, just no, to- I'm telling you. You know who's gonna beat Rusev? Hmm. Medusa. Medusa. Hall of Famer Medusa. That's right. With the Mad, Mad USA, she's gonna run out. Red, red, red. I never knew Medusa st- stood for Made in USA. I had yeah. no idea until I read her Wikipedia like a couple weeks ago when she got inducted. Yeah, um, sword, sword. Hmm. Her name is Mad USA. Had no idea. <laughs> okay, I uh, now okay. She's gonna paint. She's gonna paint Rusev with the monster truck. Listen, uh, 1999 WCW did not take, take the time out. to explain that to me. Okay, um, so some comments from the cl- uh, from the from the classroom, um, from the chat. Eamon's uh, saying, I don't see how making Daniel Bryan the lower level champion and having Cena take the belt off Rusev softens the blow. I presume to the Roman Reigns situation. Um, it gives them more stuff. You know, it's a variety show. If you don't like what's at the top of the card, you got all this other stuff going on, including, hey, John Cena got this thing if you're into that. Daniel Bryan got this thing uh, if you're into that. You know, by the way, is anybody else marked out when you saw, like, uh, uh, Ziggler and Daniel just punching each other in the face last night? Um, like, that was pretty That was pretty awesome. And, like, I just want that. Just give me that. Um, and where's Sheamus, damn it? Um, uh, it's a shameful thing. He's gonna win that Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Likely, oh I agree. No, I agree. No, no. He's gonna I be agree. the last guy running out. He's going to bro kick Zack Ryder into the big show, <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to <laughs> fly. <laughs> I, I swear, to God, you know how Wade Barrett had that big bull hammer spree last night? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, which was amazing. That, picture that at WrestleMania with Sheamus and Boots. <laughs> He's going to kick every you. single person okay. in the fucking face. Okay, okay. That's a really sad part to me about this oh. icy title uh, uh, scrum that's happening here is we're going to see that nobody thinks that that uh, uh, Barrett is going to come out of this alive. No, right? no, no. I would love it. I would love it. Ever. I would love it if Barrett came out of it alive. I think the only one. There's, there's no. There's a the zero, only one, zero let's percent. be honest. The only one holding out for it is Matt Carlin's. Um and and I, 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 I think Fram. he's great, but it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. going to be a shame for him to drop that. Chip. If Honestly, he does, I don't think Barrett's yeah. the least likely person to win that match, though. No, no, no. I'd say I'd say it's Brian, Ziggler, um, Stardust, and then Barrett. I, I could live with that. Yeah, our truth is not. Our truth is not winning that match. There's a reason yeah. that during this entire feud, he's been on the one on commentary and not actually wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. Um, could you? I, I really hope that? Brian is safe in this ladder match. What, oh. a, what a swerve that would be if R Truth wins this, right? I mean, just 
<laughs> Dude, John, that, that means, that means we get dance. more. He can do the dance from the uh, Dirty De- Network crawl. There you go. <laughs> dun, dun. I'm, I'm down with it. If, if I see Seamus kick people in the face and win a battle royal, if I see John Cena beat Rusev, if I see, if I see, what was the other one? I was going, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, Reigns. I'm on the Reigns bandwagon. I want to see where this train is headed. Uh, oh, by the by the way, I do have an idea for a feud for Rusev after WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, is this pre- how is, we had, is that presuming I mean, he loses? You know, either way, either okay. way. Um, you know, you remember how uh, Seth Rollins had his little feud with uh, John Stewart? <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about his dick pics for a second. No, I'm not that kind of guy, man. Like, don't, don't do that. Um, no, I'm thinking Rusev versus the last true champion of America, Stephen Colbert. Oh, uh, if he had a show to promote, that was Stephen Colbert, but that's not what that show is going to be. So, yeah, unfortunately, and, and CBS is not going to get involved with any of that nonsense. No, absolutely not. <laughs> CBS, CBS is going to be like, no, excuse me, we're grooming him to replace David Letterman. He's not going to be on your fancy fake fighting show. Right. <laughs> Basically, unfortunately. Um, could you imagine? Uh, just, just, just another query. What if Brock just beats the shit out of Rusev, uh, Ro- uh, Roman Reigns? Like, just annihilates him. <laughs> like, we all assume Reigns one, is winning. One, what I, if that doesn't one, happen? Well, well, we talked about this. This, this idea that they're setting up, at least in the, in the talking, the way Paul Heyman's going, that they're going to make it look like, or at least giving the air, that Brock may just go and actually kick his ass for real. Right, uh, that he may go off script and make sure nothing happens, and I bet that match is going to do as much as it can to play off of that. I, I, but what if that is the script? Like, if if the, if the script is for Brock to just destroy Reigns and then have Reigns get really pissed off, attack Brock after the match, then Ambrose comes out and helps Reigns, and then. Rollins comes out, cashes in Reformation of the Shield. You're giving creative too much credit again. I know! It's a, it's a wonderful fantasy booking idea. Wonderful. No chance of it happening. I know. Because it's just too good. It's just too good. <laughs> All right, let us know what you... Oh, wait, we, we do have some comments. Um, I put this uh, some of these topics out on our Facebook group. Look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great conversations. Antonio Garza says, I learned that... Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong thing completely. There it is. He says that um, to this, you know, uh, you know, has the IC and US title mattered again? That was the question. He says, not really. One feud has a title and the second... Uh, as the second reason, uh, regardless of how much Cena tries to say he cares about the title, the other has a champ that loses all the time, and the rest are quite delusional for playing hot potato with the title. That's entertaining, guys. I, I, di- I disagree about the U.S. title thing. Right. Okay. Because Cena is fighting for America. Right. What represents America in the WWE? The United States Championship. Mm-hmm. That's what he's fighting for. It's the whole belt. feud is about the belt and the country. It's like it's like a flag match without a flag, and you have a belt instead of the flag. Like that's what he's fighting for, because Rusev is saying that no one else in America can be the champion of America because Americans suck. Right, 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 and that's why you will not have anybody booing John Cena at WrestleMania, just like in yeah, Pittsburgh. I don't know. I think. No, no, I think. Uh, I think. I think it's going to be they're going to frame that in such a way that if you're booing John Cena, you're booing America. I think it's John Cena's the tea party. He, really <laughs> is. he kind of is. He kind of is. I, I was saying that all last night, like, like John Cena almost got to the point of saying like, respect the troops. Damn it. Like <laughs> it's just really bad. Like, like he's fighting for America yet. Rusev is in America as in the, as, and is allowed to say whatever the fuck he wants. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it's just, I don't know. John Cena's the tea party. <laughs> he really is. He All right. Fox uh, News to promote the match. 
<laughs> um anyways on that note let us know what you thought we got a lot of great notes coming up in the chat room uh like like mainstream matt is saying you know that said i i i had more hope for rusev when russia stuff was being downplayed before fast lane now it's all up in your face but i think that's the point of it let's let's get america on everybody's asses um anyways on that note uh hey support the show support our friends that support the show our friends at slice on broadway i got their fine menu with their wonderfully named uh, uh, gourmet pizzas here. Look at that fine, fine stuff. Uh, yeah, they brought it in here when we, we got our, our pizza for everybody that comes in studio. Hashtag pizza life. Hashtag pizza life. Um, but great stuff on here. Like, here, wait, check this out. There's one called the Green Monster. It's scary good. There's goat cheese on this, folks. How many pizza places have goat cheese? Is that that's not a regular thing, right, Mike? I mean, they have goat uh, cheese a lot up there in uh, New York. I can't really speak. New York pizza does no. all sorts of crazy. They do all kinds of. Okay, okay. So, I mean, there was a lot of fun like stuff like that. Um, and and you know, uh, I could go for some goat cheese. Right about Douglas, now, Douglas Sturt, our friend from ShouldIDrinkThat.com, was on Awesome Cast earlier. He was telling me about he gets for the kids uh, what they call a a naked pizza. They have to cook it with the cheese, like because hey, that's how pizza is made. But then they take the cheese off, so all you have is the sauce. But you still get the greasiness from the cheese. That sounds kind of amazing. It sounds kind of good, actually. That's uh, a, no, no, because I'm not gonna lie. I will take the cheese off and eat the pizza normally, mm -hmm. and then just eat the cheese afterwards. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Oh, so there's that one called really good. There's one called the Frisky Billy Goat. Also with goat cheese, meatballs, etc. Um, but they make this stuff. It's it's fresh ingredients. It's fun. They're they're scary into pizza, and uh, we love them for it. They got two locations here: Beachview along the tracks, as well as Carnegie, PA. Um, and you see that exit on your way out to the airport if you're coming in or out of town for any reason. Um, and uh, yeah, go check them out. Please support them at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, Slice on Broadway on the Instagram and the Facebook. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And if, if that's the case, and you're not around here, you'll wish you lived in Pittsburgh as well. Um, this great, there's a great food porn on their sites too. Great. Um, Thanks. So good great. stuff. Good stuff. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Alex. Sorry, you sorry, got sorry. Back to sorry, if I send $4 to, to the show, like a dollar a week for a whole month, can you send me a slice of slice? Of I don't think that covers that. You don't think? That should that? be a Patreon level. If, if, if uh, if you get X amount, we will send you a slice pizza, like a legit. Yes. Like I, I got I got you know maybe I'll inquire with them. Say well, how how much does 20, somebody have to pay for you to mail them a pizza? Yes, because we're gonna try to work it out. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. We'll see what we can do with that. Anyways, on that note, uh, we're gonna take a short short break for these $20. messages, for these messages, and uh, be right back. With the big question by the Riz. Hey, Shamar Kushko, Madonna, Surrender, and I asked if you are listening to the. What is this show called again? It's a wrestling mayhem show. Wrestling mayhem show. You that whole sound bite. This is Devon, and you are listening to the wrestling mayhem show. Take two. Hey guys, we're back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for that big question. And of course, the big question, usually by our own DJ Lunchbox, who is on hiatus for the month of March. He's out in the Appalachias somewhere, tracking bears and 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 making friends with Sasquatches or whatever it is. But this week, the big question is actually going to come to us. From the Riz, who joins us right now at the E Riz, and also check out those fantastic writings over at Insert Coin to Begin .com, where he talks about video games of all things. Riz, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you for joining us there with a big question for the week. Lay it on us. Well, you're welcome, Sorg. Uh, so, I actually posted this on the Facebook group because I think this is a big question that we needed to discuss more than just here. Uh, so, and I, I did tell the people who are supposed to be on the show today not to answer on the Facebook group. Okay. So the question I put on is a question that we've been trying to get through for the net for the last two, three weeks now. Um, it's about the hall of fame. <gasps> uh, hall of fame. And no, we've don't, been don't, don't, this hold on. Today. Don't do that again, Mike. <laughs> yeah, don't, I'm not going to. Don't we, do that we, will get, we will get thrown out. Uh, 
we have been discussing this to death the entire month. As soon as they announced uh, Rikishi, we had some discussion about it. As soon as they announced uh, Connor, we had more discussion about it. And we still had discussion when Larry Zabisco got inducted into the Hall of Fame this week. Um, so my this is actually a two-parter. Uh-oh. One, what are your requirements for being in the Hall of Fame? Like, what, what would you recommend, like, if you were a voter, what would you, who would you vote, why would you vote for this guy? Okay, so, so and, bro- broadly, you're looking for the rules? Yeah, like, like, dedication, like, pretty much like a job interview type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the second part of the question is, out of the people that aren't in it yet, who would you choose by your qualifications, by your recommendations, by your requirements for this one? Um, I, have, I have a quick question about the second part. Is that sure. assuming all legal things are out the window? Yes. Okay. Oh, here we go. You know what name's well, coming no, I'm, now. I'm just saying. Just okay. Who wants to go first? Man, or should we read the Facebook comments first? Yeah, we. Uh, you know what? Let's read the Facebook comments. All right. Uh, let me let me roll this one. Let me roll this yeah, one. You, you um. So Gabriel, who's joined us more recently on the Wrestling Man Show group, uh, hi Gabe. Uh, hi Gabe. Uh, actually, like great conversations he's he's having over there with us. Uh, G- Gabe says, "Is it Gabe? It was, are we allowed to call him Gabe? I don't know. If, I don't know. Like, it's Gabe." I don't, I don't. I mean, we're so official here on. on I, just, I feel we're on a first name basis. Okay, hi Gabe, but we're shorting well, it as well. His first name is Gabriel as well, so a nickname like... basis then. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so the requirements are longevity, impact, memories. It's pretty simple. If they made an impact, or I remember them for their gimmick, skills, etc., they eventually should get in. Mm-hmm. And as for who should get in, Steiner Brothers. I can agree with Ooh. that. Steiner Brothers I definitely need to. Um, uh, Tony Garza, WrestlingRevolution.com. Uh, requirement to have given your work for the rest. To have given your work for the wrestling yeah, business. To have given a pos- positive improvement on the industry. To have a memorable impact on the history of pro wrestling. This is for us, uh, the fans, and for the WWE, the company, to express their appreciation to the wrestlers and other important people, announcers, bookers, Jim's Johnston, etc., for all of the work that they have done for us. Uh, who should mm-hmm. be in? Brooklyn Brawler. I agree with that as well. I think we talked about that in the past, actually. Um, Charles Gross. Gloss. I'm sorry. Gloss. Charles Gloss. My bad. My bad. Um, I'll, I'll give some people I think should be in. Bam Bam Bigelow, Lex Luger, IRS, Tatanka, Vader, Alundra Blaze. Well, of course, Alundra's going to be in there this mm-hmm. year. Probably a lot more. Excuse me if I... Hold on. Oh, excuse me. Mentioned somebody that's already in there, and uh, yeah, I, I agree with all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for me, um, I really kind of echo a little bit of uh, uh, Tony and Gabriel here, Gabe, because um, I know we have a lot of conversation about oh, why does he deserve to be in? He's Coco Beware, right? But for mm-hmm. me, Coco Beware was a highlight. You know, Rikishi was a highlight, I think. And even if he wasn't for you because of whatever age you are, Rikishi is a highlight in the same way Coco Beware is to me, to somebody who was the same age, right? Um, It's not just for us looking for, you know, you don't have to be a champion. You don't have to have been in the main event on a WrestleMania SummerSlam. You have contributed. That's that's my thing. You contributed something positive to the business, and whether that be a memory, whether that be this, whether you could be Pete Rose getting uh, Tombstone three times, whether you be Arnold, even Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, uh, being involved. Because anytime, and you say celebrities, anybody, somebody like that's been involved. It's like, well, he did like one thing with us like years ago, right? And it's like, yeah. well, that's still a positive influence because he's freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger and he likes pro wrestling, and that gives a positive spin versus we were kind of talking but i think was the last segment or on break about cbs they're not going to play with that fake fighting you know that's the industry mindset in a lot of places but you get guys like him coming out and getting involved and really putting a positive influence on that so uh who should be in let's go with that celebrity wing i think i may have mentioned this on the show before uh celebrity wing i want uh hugh jackman eventually seth green and uh bob barker also i Celebrity Wing, I think you have to also include um, – oh, Christ, now I can't think of his name. Hmm. 
Uh, go with someone else. I, I just had it. Okay, no problem, no problem. Um, Alex, what do you got? Uh, as far as criteria, I'm going to say that they have to be at least as good as Pete Rose. <laughs> okay, uh, not just celebrities. Or, or are you talking across no. the board? <laughs> I mean, in general, no. Okay. Uh, actually, no, uh, kind of going off of what you were saying, what others have said, uh, ideally, I would love to just, like, people that are making, like, a big impact overall, like, whether it's in-ring or backstage or even, like, through the publicity stuff in wrestling as a whole. But realistically, since this is the WWE Hall of Fame, if you get that sense of that, then yeah, absolutely. Like, but that's why generally I I'm okay with like who they typically induct into it. Mm-hmm. As far who as who I would like to see in it, um, it's just like celebrity wing wise. I would love to see uh, I'd love to see Andy Kaufman in. Uh, oh yes, especially because of like his feud with. Uh, Jerry the King Lawler, how that helped yeah. bring like wrestling into a mainstream so early on, um, like especially like the Southern wrestling, like the Memphis wrestling, helped bring that into the mainstream attention. Uh, so yeah, that would be. I think that would be someone that I'd love to see in the Hall of Fame. I sadly, I don't think you're going to get Andy Kaufman in the Hall of Fame because they like to have their celebrities to be alive. Yeah, because otherwise. What's the point of saying there's going to be a celebrity induction if that celebrity isn't there to be induced? Right, but I think that's one of those things that maybe transcends that a little bit. It could, potentially. This, I is, don't also, know. Wait, eh. this is also Andy Kaufman we're talking about. Yeah, He'll yeah. probably show up to <laughs> the induction ceremony. At the very yeah. least, Tony Clifton would, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <clears throat> and then we'll have the question, and maybe it'll be a mama uh, video like Mr. T. But, uh, uh, the Wrestle Genius. On the Twitter, what do you think? Uh, me, I, I'm actually going to go the other way with this in terms of who should be in the Hall of Fame. I think it should actually be much more strict. I, I think there are way too many guys in. Um, I think they put way too many guys in every year, and I understand why they do that. It's the PR ploy and the whole deal. You know, it's wrestling, but to me, Hall of Fame is the truly top notch kind of guys. That the guys that are main eventers, you know, more so than guys who made an impact. Like at this point now, who's the best wrestler who's not in at this point? Mm-hmm. Mike Rotondo. I mean, Owen Hart. Oh no. Owen Hart. Yeah. I go with Owen Hart. Owen Hart, Rick Rude. Uh, you got, you got a couple of guys that are, yeah, but, 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 but let's talk about this for a second here. With, let's go with Rick Rude. Who we all agree was great. But wonderful feuds throughout the 80s and into the 90s, uh, you know, even in, was a big part of wrestling even after he, he was physically yes. unable to, to, to really wrestle or whatever. Did he ever main event anything? SummerSlam. Oh, is, yeah. Cage match at SummerSlam, right? There's also, or, well, it, and because they do kind of count stuff outside of WWE, he had, was, had a long run as WCW champion. He did. He did. With staying, was, he actual, you know. was he the actual world champ? Or was he yeah. The... No, he he wasn't the world champion. He was the North American champion, I believe. So this is oh. still like sort of NWA. Yeah, but but they're even they're counting Zabisco's like AWA stuff. And like, Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I to me Zabisco is a legend and, and whatever, but a living legend, a living legend, if you will. and from Pittsburgh, by the way. So mm-hmm. I love him, right? Um. Larry Zabisco is a guy I don't I don't think should be in the Hall of Fame. I, mean, I, I I could go through the list of people in the Hall of Fame right now and throw out about half. I'm looking at the list on Wikipedia here. So that, yeah, but that's just me. You can't go not, backwards. No, no, I don't. Th- I don't think you should go backwards. I, I'm just saying to me, the Hall of Fame is a little more stratified than perhaps what they make. So that's it's not really going to be a real popular opinion, but I don't really give a shit. So. I mean, honestly, <laughs> this year's Hall of Fame is kind of a wash. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter who else you put in, Macho Man. That's the selling point. <sighs> My right? God, yeah, right. of course. Yeah, I mean that's the selling point. Macho Man is the selling right. point. In the you future, you want. in the future, you're going to have to combine a lot of those. Like you'll get a lot of those should have been in there, but couldn't have been a Macho Man level induction. Um, mm-hmm. Just to kind of bump it all up. 
you know? Uh, so it'll be the, the sum of it rather than the part, the single part that brought everybody to the, to the table, like a warrior, like Hulk Hogan years. Right. I mean, notice Hulk Hogan, the year Hulk Hogan was in, it was like this, everybody standing behind him was the rogues gallery of everybody he went through in the eighties. You yeah. know, like that's, that's the big thing that really kind of hits me when I, when I watched that year's uh, hall of fame, but, uh, Eamon, I'm really curious to get your thoughts on this. Well, um, I, I think there, there's a couple of descriptions I think that could aid to someone being in the Hall of Fame. The stuff that comes to mind is, you know, longevity, um, talent, you know, drawing power, um, uh, any of those multitude of things. And it doesn't necessarily, I think, have to be a combination of all of those things. You could have, you know, somebody who wasn't there very long but was very talented or, or or, you know, was there for a long time, but wasn't necessarily considered like a huge draw. Um, as far as people who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, there's like, um, uh, one of the comments mentioned like Vader. I'm, I, I'm shocked Vader's not in it. Like, I think he is more than deserving based off of his, the, his match quality, but also just his talent and, and his, you know, spots on the card and stuff like that um, in, in, in many promotions. Um, I, I think of, you know, like a Rick Rude, as another one. Um, the one that came to mind, it's very obscure and, and I don't, you know, it's not like a top level hall of fame, like going to be on the top billing or whatever. I immediately thought of the big boss man for some reason. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. he's somebody that's been there a long time, been in wrestling a long time. You know, it, it was always very, you know, colorful, very, you know, you know, it wasn't always the top level match. He was, he was never the top guy really anywhere, but he, oh. You know, he he was always a, a pretty focused character and and delivered some really memorable stuff. I think. I mean, the thing is that they, they don't like putting a lot of um, dead wrestlers in. That's true. Year. Like that's the thing. Like if you if reminder. you're headlining with someone who's not going to be there, you can't have any other dead people. You can't like that. I think I think that's kind of the like one well, dead this wrestler. Isn't, this isn't. Who's going in this year? This yeah, is not, who's going in. But a lot of the guys we're naming, a lot of the guys we're naming are gone. Also, can I uh, so, just? I th- mean, you you can really only have like one, maybe two of those a year. Um, side note as well. Uh, is this the first time in the Hall of Fame that the top build, like the top build Hall of Fame nope. inductee, is Eddie. somebody that's Eddie. been post? Was Eddie, Eddie was Eddie the top one though that I year? Yeah, he was. No, nope. yeah. It, Eddie was the top bill that year. Was he? I have just to, about, I'm just about positive. Mm-hmm. I'd have to look that up. I know he was like one of the bigger mentioned ones, but I can't. I don't think he was like the the number one. I'm just about positive he was top. Well, bill we'll, we'll look at the Wikipedia so we're not hanging up on it. Hey, Matt Carlin, yeah. uh, I'm curious your ideas. If uh, you're ready, if you got the big board, if you got a moment there, the big board there, <laughs> look at future. There's the big board for Mayhem yes. Mania. Mayhem Mania, we're going to do here in uh, in just a little bit on the Wrestling Mayhem the Show, blank. part of the Mayhem blank Club. Blank look at that right behind you. Wonderful design, yeah. by Alex. Well, we'll it's not it. for you; it's for me. Um, <laughs> this anyway, is true too. Okay. what do you think? Uh, I guess if you're gonna put any like, all right, if you're gonna force my hand and make me create like a hard criteria for the Hall of Fame, maybe like main eventing a pay per view would be like a good criteria for consideration. And so, the fun part of that is that now it's okay to put Rikishi in. Um, <laughs> it's okay to put Rick Rude in. Um, you're, you're playing to so my it really point opens things. It opens things up a lot more than you would think. You're playing to my point there. There's 12 pay per views a year just in WWE. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I was gonna yeah, say it also right. opens things up to our truth. <laughs> yeah, right. It's right. Well, I'm sorry. You know what? I, our, in like ten years, had a long career. In ten He's years from WWE now, champion. you may not like him now, but I loved Kate Quick. He did some stuff as wrong, wrong killings, and I, we all know that W is going to own TNA sooner or later, anyways. Um, our WWE truth champion. should be in the Hall of Fame someday. In the Coco Beware spot. Ooh, I'm, I'm putting that out there. I'm putting it there. I, I I'm sorry, the Coco Beware wing. In the Coco Beware wing. That's fine. That's fine. What? I would like this to be clipped out. And saved for eternity. <laughs> Fine, give me the time later. And let me know. Let oh, me know. I, I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, go go ahead with the rest of your answer. Um, that said, I mean, I, I'm kind of like uh, Hall of Fames in general for me are uh, kind of. Are, are you still hearing me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, Hall of Fames for me are kind of a deal where, like, if you have to debate the Hall of Famer candidate, 
he probably shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. So if like yeah. you're debating for like ten years whether Ron Santo deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame, guess what? Ron Santos not, probably shouldn't be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Anyway, tangent. it depends on the reason for the debate. That's an interesting I, point. That's an interesting point. No reason for the debate. If it has to be debated, then he probably shouldn't be in. Because it's for the best of the best, right? But if you if you do that, there's only going to be like four or five total Hall of Famers in but every what, Hall of Fame. That's my Hall isn't of Fame. That where, isn't that how we got to this point? Is that the, the reason we're having this discussion right now is because there are too many people who are like on the line um, who, are, who are getting in the Hall of Fame, and now people are getting a little uneasy about it. Okay, so, or, or hey, we'll um, have here's a... Three, here's three names for you that I think should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, now that I've said pay-per-view main event, I'm going to completely go against myself. Dean Malenko should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah. Dean Malenko may have like my spirit animal in wrestling. War games. And I know um, Sapu, mm-hmm. hugely influential, especially in the early days of ECW. Um, and George Hackenschmidt should definitely be in. Hackenschmidt. Oh, Hackenschmidt. Wow. <laughs> can you do one thing that George Hackenschmidt did? No. Can, that's like the old name that you used. He was the first uh, NWA champion. <laughs> Amen. Spell Hackenschmidt. H A C K E N S M. Is it Smith or Smith? Schmidt. 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 Then S M I. Then S M I T. No, S C H M I D T. Whatever. Also, That's because you're too young to know yeah. what George Hackenschmidt, you filthy millennial. Oh, <laughs> um, sign up with that. The uh, unbreakable George Hackenschmidt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stay alive, damn it. Uh, sign up with that uh, Eddie Guerrero question. Uh, he actually wasn't the top inductee because that year uh, Bret Hart was inducted. Oh, yep. okay. I right. still argue Eddie's. Nope. Top. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's definitely Brett. No, no, no. It's definitely Brett. Also, also, I'm reading the Wikipedia page and it mentioned that Chris Benoit inducted him and I just felt weird inside. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm going through those matches at WrestleMania right now. That's that's kind of fun, too. Um, anyways, uh, also, uh, somebody said uh, uh, anonymous guest in the chat room says that I want to see a swerve and build a mock goes in. Um, no, God. Bill DeMott doesn't even deserve to go in if nope, you look nope, at nope. his career. Let us know. Hey, by the way, very humorous, this is all uh, you guys can participate, and we have something to give you if you do. Uh, uh, let us know what is uh, what is your Hall of Fame criteria, and can you give us names that you think fit that criteria that should be in that have not yet? And you can let us know and hashtag us WMS Big Question on Twitter. Follow at Mayhem Show and hashtag it, uh, hashtag WMS Big Question. This week, we are giving something away. We're giving up. Give, we're giving away one of the old ones. I mentioned earlier the massive IWC back catalog we got just posted at PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, we're going to actually uh, be giving away an old Super Indie, Super Indie Five from 2006. Ooh, now listen to the names on this one. Oh, were you, is, is Riz in the crowd? Can we play Find the Riz if you get this one? Wait, is this? I can't. See. Let me read this off. Let me read this off. Name, so opening might... round. Opening round included Delirious on there against a local guy named Glenn Spector. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. This Matt is the one Seidel. Some may know as Evan Board, currently tearing it up in Ring of Honor in New Japan. And, and, coming, uh, to, and coming to IWC. And again. coming to IWC here for uh, in Meadville again uh, against Petey Williams. Remember that guy? He doesn't even wrestle anymore. Uh, we got to do one of his last matches. Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, never heard of that guy. You may know as Cesaro. Who the fuck's oh. that guy? Versus Balls <laughs> Hot Troy Lords. Balls Hot. Balls Hot. Balls Hot. Ricky Reyes. What's his name on oh, Lucha hot. Underground? Ricky Reyes? Yeah. I think he's like Reyes. Is it just? Uh, I don't remember. It's Ricky something. He's on Ricky Crow. He's on Lucha Underground now, but Ricky Reyes. He I was, thought he was Mil. I thought that was Mil Muertes. No, 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 no. no that no. is not Mil Muertes. No, 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 no. no. Oh, Mil. Uh, he's a lot smaller guy than Mil Muertes. Uh, um, but yeah, Al- yeah, Ricky Reyes is a, a fantastic guy. He was one of the but, Rottweilers in, in Ring of Honor uh, back in the day against Alex Shelley. Hey, Alex Shelley. Alex Shelley. He's awesome. You're may. You're uh, also in here. Wait, hold on, Riz. Uh, Cortez oh, Castro. He's one of the. He's one of the members of the. Thank crew. you. Thank you. But he's on there. Uh, also, Hentai, another great local guy we've had on the show before. In a four-way against uh, Cole Cabana, Chris Saban, and fabulous John McChesney. Um, also, a pretty good match. Also on your Burning River uh, 
Burning River uh, Brigade against the Gambinos. Burning River Brigade is Matt Cross, you may from know from Tough Enough and Josh Prohibition. Both you know from Backyard Wrestling DVDs from about 10 years ago as well. Um, a lot of great, great stuff on here. Um, uh, yes. Yes, yes, Riz, you got you got some you got some big news on on how big the story this uh, DVD is. Every time you see me take a drink, that's <laughs> all I'm gonna say. Uh, but Sorg, hmm. didn't you skip me already? Oh well, you gave the question. I, I have something. Okay, real quick, and then I'll t- I'll tell them about last week's big question. Okay, um, so real quick, there there's sports and entertainment. They need to be the bar needs to be set higher each time okay. uh, with, with whatever you do in, in professional wrestling. So uh, like, like uh, I'm just going to repeat names here because uh, these are the names that I've figured out. Uh, Vader, somehow he's not in it. Uh, Andy Kaufman, somehow he's not in it. And he can be a wrestler or a, or a celebrity because without him, there's no celebrity wing. Um, I'd argue and, that. Of course you would. And also, and also Vince McMahon. Oh, he's not going until he's dead. Yeah. Vince McMahon. If uh, okay, that's it, still, mm-hmm. he deserves to be in. And it's not <laughs> saying when he's going to be in. It's deserving who's going to be in. I thought Riz was gonna be like, okay, then somebody kill him. <laughs> no, it's gonna be it's gonna be when he retires. If that yeah, happens. when he when he's done, he's when going he's to go in the Hall of Fame, and, and he's does. going to get inducted, and that that's fine. But he's going he he should be inducted, right? Because of all the right. shit that he has done in professional wrestling. Have they ever inducted his dad? Yes, yes, they did. Okay, good. He was one of the first one. Good. No, one of like the. The first, first one was Andre. I think yeah. uh, um, Jay McMahon went in uh, the first right, year of like a whole bunch of inductees at right, once. Right. Um, yeah, they're gonna put the whole McMahon. <laughs> yeah, just gonna put them in as a McMahon family, and everybody gets a yeah. ring. Um, <laughs> I I really hope it happens. I, I hope they somehow come up with a way to force Vince to accept induction while he's still alive. Because I want to hear that induction, induction speech. I want yeah. to hear Vince like. Basically, lay out his like commission statement as like the old you know promoter who's seen it all, mm-hmm. um, and have to just kind of like just tell us what's in his brain for once in his damn life, you know? Unless he already, I, I got, think, unless I, he already got inducted during that, I forget which which uh, SmackDown SmackDown versus Raw it was, <laughs> and he just got inducted by himself. I forget yeah. which one it was. I think he was world heavyweight champion back then, and it was awkward. Uh, but continue. Anyways, uh, but anyways, last week's uh, big question was asking uh, about the the Bill Demont situation and and the tough training in pro wrestling, whether there's still any place with it. And uh, these guys are going to actually get uh, these are go- guys are going to actually get a uh, cage combat in Clearfield. Uh, from just two Saturdays ago here uh, from the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, one, two. Hey, this guy. Power to the Smarks on the Twitter. Hey, That's him. Alex Cars. Uh, hey. Alex, you're saying there's no place for this training, at least not in WWE. They have dot, 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 standards and practices. And uh, Kyle Turner, who's also been really big over on uh, the uh, Facebook of the we'll have something from him a little later. WWE is considering bringing back the free bur- Wait, no, this is something else. <laughs> oh no he asked us a question okay about the free bird rule about the free bird rule so i think he was suggesting a well, big question next week. i copied it over all right next next week we're talking what about if we the lived in a world world build a mob was a free bird <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Free oh, right. oh no uh speaking of which, hey they'd all live on bad street we got though. with us a guy we talk about pro wrestling uh all the time we have a story over there to pro wrestling slash wms of course, and we, we talk about all the time here with some great designs. But one Alex Cars who's joining us, but also I want to point out because we got a show, we got a model this week joining us on the show. Uh, Matt Carlins is uh, sporting, if I can get the feed to work here, he's sporting That's right. The, that is a Mayhem Club shirt. That's 
Drake Capote. That sure illegal is. Illegal in Japan. <laughs> yeah, you may wonder, how do we have one of those? Because those are illegal on the uh, Pro Wrestling Tees website as the news came down. But actually, if you go over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and uh, the wonderful cool. supporters and everything on the side, you can become a patron. You can hit, click on that link for Pro Wrestling Tees and get some stuff there. But also, we got this big one for Mayhem Club Wrestling Mayhem Show. That takes us you actually to our Spreadshirt page. We, you can be Riz. You have a lot of other yes. stuff. Are you a Chachi Says guy? Um, no. All kinds of other stuff uh, going on there. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts. All kinds of stuff. So uh, eat your heart out, Carl Anderson. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And, and, uh, you have you have a guest in the chat room saying you are a dreamy sob. Oh, hey, that's right. So yeah, go Matt, check it out. Matt, 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 too sweet me. Too, too sweet, sweet, sweet me, Broski. Alex Cars, you're the you're the designer of these shirts, these fantastic uh, shirtwear. You're inspired by the Mayhem Show, and we appreciate it. No problem. Glad I could be we help. appreciate you. Oh, you have, um, of course, you got the power to the smarts.com, but you also have your own site for design work. You want to plug that real quick while we're uh, talking about that topic? Yeah, if you want to reach me for uh, design in general, uh, again, I do branding, print, merch, digital media, all sorts of good stuff, uh, websites. I'm a WordPress enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to alexandercars.com. That's K A H R S. AlexanderCars.com, and just hit me up. You can check out my uh, my full p- portfolio on on my Behance page, uh, and just go from there. Just contact me. Uh, you can hit me up on the Twitters at AlexanderCars or at Power to the Smarks. That's number two, Power to the Smarks, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and and actually, if if, I, if you give me a second. Uh, uh, I recently did a design for a, a friend I met recently, a fellow, uh, a uh, a lady wrestler out here in Southern California named Kikio Nakamura, uh, and she's actually promoting the uh, this shirt on Teespring, uh, which basically you sell a certain number of shirts, and then it gets printed and sent it out. So if you go to teespring.com slash Kikio dash chant you will be able to find yourself a nice wonderful shirt designed by yours truly for twenty dollars how do you spell so that what a deal. that's k-i-k so that's teespring.com slash k-i-k-y-o dash chant okay and we'll uh, tweet that out as well and you can check out that design over there at teespring.com slash kikyo hyphen chant and like I said, we'll share that out to the tweeters and uh, Facebooks and everything as well, so you can get in on that. Um, they uh, was it only two more? Ah, everything's popping up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, t- two more. Two more shirts need to get nice. Uh, two more shirts need to get printed in order to get them all printed and shipped out. Nice, nice, nice. So let's roll it around. Of course, uh, family. We actually got a voicemail this week from our boy Boo Diggity. Now, uh, Mike, Mike, you're following what's going on here with him. What? There's a there's a premise to this, or should I just play the voicemail? I I hope there's a premise to it. I may be completely wrong about this. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's going or on here. Just play the play the voicemail. I'm just gonna play the voicemail. Oh my God, King, he's got him knocked down in the middle of the ring. What's he gonna do here? Oh, steps on his stomach, jumps, bumps, I drop to the chest. One, two, three, got a new champion, it's handy. Woo! That's okay, it. So there was so a premise. Someone, There's no premise. So there Why did we do this? There was a premise to that, and I will explain it thusly. Uh, <laughs> basically, um, Bo Diggity tweeted earlier today that his son has perfected a new finishing maneuver. His son is i think maybe less than a year old um so i requested that bo diggity would uh call into the mayhem show and um and basically give the call for his son's new finisher as jim ross and uh that's what we got thank you bo diggity there you go 
<laughs> Thank you for that. You can send uh, intelligent or uh, you can send intelligent or unintelligible uh, voicemails yourself to four one two four or two zero six WMS zero as well. Uh, and any fan of the good times at wrestling. You have to make com. Andy look strong. Sorry. Make Andy look strong, oh, yes. certainly. So let's uh, hop over. Mike, you requested some time. Uh, I'm going to give you a short couple minutes here. We want to talk about Impact I'm Wrestling. Take a nap now. Uh, hey, no, 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 no. no, no. Let no. Honestly, be. honestly, I have nothing bad to say this week. But should I still call it Impact Death Watch? Um, Tea break. I'm what? sorry. Oh God damn it! Come on. <laughs> should, should, Come should. on, guys. They when they do something, <laughs> I have to give them credit for it. All right, hold it's on a second. Friday, Friday. Impact Wrestling it's it's Friday. like when the dog chases outside. You have to give him a treat. Um, yeah, I mean, we're impartial. I mean, I, we're not negative to be negative. We're negative because they we don't like what they're doing. Here, Mike, how about this change? Uh-huh. <laughs> can I, can I, before Mike begins, I, I love that that's negative. In fact, yay watch? Is that what it is? Yay watch. I, lo- I love uh, yeah. does, this, does this mean Mad Mike's going to be in a, like a Speedo now? I'll be there for you. All right. A, you're assuming I'm not already. Two, um, let, let's talk about impact just, just for a split second. And was that, was that, sorry, were you singing the friend song? Yeah, I realize I think I, I messed it up. It's okay. It's all right. We'll There's all a- be there for you. Pivot, pivot, pivot. We get it. Anyway, um, so Impact this week, they had one of their bigger shows. Like, uh, they had a lot of marquee matches. Mm-hmm. They had Eric Young versus Bobby Roode, which was actually Ooh. pretty decent. Uh, it was the last man standing match. It was a nice capper for their feud. God willing, they'll never wrestle again because they've had about 18 bazillion matches. You know what's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know they're going to tag against each other next week or some bullshit like that. No, they're anyway, tag with each other eventually. Yeah, of course they will. But uh, it was I a good match. Now. It was it was a really good match. Uh, a lot of good high spots. Um, it didn't end in a draw, which is nice. With TNA, you always run that risk. Uh, but that was a good match. Bram versus Magnus was okay if you like that sort of thing. I particularly don't. Um, but the main event, the main by God event, hair versus hair, Rockstar Spud, EC3. If I need to tell you any more than that to sell you on this match, then you are not a wrestling fan. These two guys have had mm-hmm. a storyline they've been building for months and months. If they if TNA still did traditional pay-per-views, this is a pay-per-view worthy main event. Uh, it was an amazing match. They had amazing promos beforehand. They had an amazing promo after the goddamn match. Uh, Ethan Carter, I swear to God, he is the bright, shining light in TNA. He is the reason to watch. Uh, normally, I would not tell you to go find Destination America on your cable box. I would not tell you to find it on YouTube. I am telling you to find this match. Find uh, the hair versus hair match. It's bloody. It's a little graphic. The only... Down part I have about it is uh, Destination America decided that some of the close-ups on uh, Rockstar Spud's face were a little too graphic for their monster hunting viewers. So they will randomly switch to black and white mode like they think they're fucking Tarantino and Kill Bill. But otherwise, it's a phenomenal match. It's a phenomenal story. And it's... That that feud is one of the reasons that I still watch TNA. Now, where they go from there, I'm not I don't. sure. I don't. I haven't read any spoilers about it. I don't wow. want to read any. Spoilers. I don't think they black and whited on their YouTube channel. <laughs> Holy crap! Okay, good. So they didn't do it on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Right, but yeah, Spud EC3, the best match I've seen in TNA in a very long time. And I know that doesn't sound like it, I'm saying a lot, but TNA, their in ring is never bad. No. No, in ring is never bad. It's usually the storylines, the progressions that you have to worry about. But this no. one, the story is there, the in ring is there, and Ethan, Ethan Carter is a fu- like how WWE let him go. Mm-hmm. I'll never didn't know. have anything for him. Yeah, I they guess. couldn't figure him he out. He didn't find EC3 and WWE. Mm-hmm. He found it in TNA. Right, and he was given the platform, and that's where you know we go back to an old conversation. Some people need the structure of a WWE to figure out what to do with themselves. Some people need the freedom of something like an Impact Wrestling or Ring of Honor to figure out who they are. Because I would contend, like, like it's not, uh, it's not just the EC3 character. No. He had a lot of personality when he was on NXT. Right, and and you know, I, I think it was a matter of just 
him getting lost in the shuffle, I think, is the best way to, to put it. Because his best stuff was in the tail end of shit no. NXT. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what the world's strongest man's sense? I mean, oh, wait, what? what it is fit. Just because you're good doesn't mean you fit with what they do. And it, yeah. No. You know, and that's a good example. So. Awesome. So, Impact Wrestling? It's still worth watching. I mean, there's still got stuff on there. I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that far. Uh, I don't know if I go. Go seek out. Seek out this week's show. Mm-hmm. I would watch this week's show. Whoops. Oh, main event is amazing. Okay. The main event is amazing, and anyone who's a wrestling fan should watch that main event. So please go check it out, and uh, yeah, if you if you have it. <laughs> I guess is the other question now too. Um, or actually, the YouTube, um, a lot of stuff. I think you can get a pretty good gist of it uh, by watching the YouTube channel as well, of what's going on over at TNA. So and it takes a lot less time. So, um, so let's get to it. Uh, we have. Hold on. Let's 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 toss it over. It's time for the mayhem. I'm sorry. Yeah, the mayhem mania. And uh, uh, Mac Harlan's. I, I wait. Did we get a list? Oh, we do have an order in there. Oh, I'm in the order. That's good to know. We had a crazy Patreon on the bank uh, uh, rendition last year or last week on this. Uh, what's going on this week, Mac Harlan's? Sorgatron. It's a little emotional for me this week. It's been a long journey, but at last, after nine weeks wandering in the wilderness, we have reached the final round of Mayhem Mania. Tonight, the six of you fools will make wow. the last six moves to our big boards, and then, God wow. willing, after a brief and harmless vote on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, we will have eight Rocket Buster matches for Mayhem Mania. Ta-da! Look at all my boards, Sorg. Arts and crafts time. They look so clean. I gotta be honest with you, Sorg. I don't know if I could take another week or so of this. I'm kind of glad it's over. <laughs> wow. It's the grand you're, experiment. You're... It's the gra- I'm, I'm, I'm all emotional. I'm like I'm like Alex Riley after my first match in three years. I just I'm on a roller coaster right now. How how all many right, sheets of white paper have you bought out from your local Michaels, Matt Carlin? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a lot? Because I I feel like you bankrupted them of white paper. Uh, uh, Carlin, yeah, I mean this has been your your project, your baby here for for what over eight weeks here now. Um, That's right. And yeah, it, I can definitely I can definitely oh. see. It's all built around a very simple premise. We we wanted to build a WrestleMania card that we wanted to see. We didn't want to – I get so tired of predicting what WWE is going to do. We wanted mm-hmm. to make what we wanted to see. We wanted to, to book something within the realms of reality and create a, a real awesome WrestleMania card. So what we've got is – basically we have, we have eight slots for eight matches. We have filled five of those matches so far, and uh, we've got more here in the on-deck circle. They're going to uh, hopefully, maybe, perhaps, mayhaps, find their way over onto the, the final card. So anyway, this is the graduated card, the permanent card, the matches that are safe, the matches that are good to go. And I'll read them off to you real quick because I know you can't read it because it looks like a blank piece of paper on your digitized okay. feed. And a lot of people are on audio versions of this show. Okay. <laughs> Here are the five matches that have graduated to the permanent Mayhem Mania card. The Miz versus Damian Mizdow. Mm-hmm. Goldust versus Stardust. Last Man Standing. Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn versus... Axelmania, and <laughs> the 60-minute Iron Woman match, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Oh, I'm sorry, Char Char versus Sasha Banks versus Paige. That will be held in a in an empty warehouse outside of Poughkeepsie, New York, so that not too yes. many people see it. Hashtag yes. give Diva a chance. All right. I'm totally going to go watch that match. You'll be the only one. That's right. right near me, Matt Carlin. Did you know that? You, where, you live in Poughkeepsie? Yeah. I know. I was unaware of that. He also works for WWE, too. 
<laughs> All right. So we've got we've got five matches on the permanent cards. We've got three more spots to fill. We've got eight matches here mm. that are kind of like the candidates. All right. This is where we're going to make six more moves tonight. The oh, final oh, six wow. moves tonight. That's it. And then we'll see. Well, we'll see what happens after that. Anyway, here's the here's the eight matches right now after. Last week's shenanigans with the Patreon of the bank. Thanks, Garza. Triple H versus Brad freaking Maddox. He's back on house shows. I know. I don't know how no one cares. Garza do that. But... Oh, wow. Don't you talk about Brad Maddox that way, Mike. We talk about Brad Maddox like kick, that. Kick pads. <laughs> Ray Wyatt versus Finn Balor. Bad News Spirit versus Kevin Owens. Cesaro versus Sheamus, Hell in a Cell, John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus Bo Dallas, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins, Losers Leave Town, The Lucha Dragons versus The Undertaker and Kane, and finally, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Sting! How has it been that yet? Hmm? Anyway. Um, so here's the way it's going to go tonight. We've got six guys. Each of you is going to make one move. The standard options are all in play. You could swap wrestlers between matches. You can add a wrestler who's not used to a previously existing match. Or you could trade out one of these matches for an entirely new match. Now, last week we introduced the stipulations. Now, I told you guys, once the stipulation is in, the stipulation sticks. So if you trade out this four-way match... And you bring in Zack Ryder versus Adam Rose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, um, so Zack Ryder that. versus Adam Rose would be contested inside Hell in a Cell. Now, to oh, make things boss, fair, right. I will give you a couple extra options. Stipulation options are back for this week. So if you want your move to be something with a stipulation, I will grant you that option. Okay. What you could do, you could either obviously add a stipulation to one of the matches. You could even add a stipulation to one of the permanent matches. I'll allow that. And if you want to, you could trade stipulations between matches. So if you want to move Hell in a Cell to somewhere else, oh my move God. Hell in a Cell somewhere else. Um, you can only use the you could only use the stipulation one time. We're not going to have two wait, Hell in a Cell matches wait, yeah, on the same yeah, yeah, card. So, that would be totally cheap. Yeah, what you're saying what? is we have to have we have to have at least one Hell in a Cell, one loser leaves town. Matt, I have a question. Can yeah, we, once it's on here, it's kind of here to stay. Can we swap the stipulations? Yeah, yeah. He's yes, you can swap the stipulations. Oh my god, we could have right. a match where Bo Dallas makes John Cena, the Roman Reigns, and The Rock all leave WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the okay. So basically, <laughs> let's just do it. Just, right. do it. just roll. Yeah. Just roll. Yeah. Um, just make it happen. Alex Cars, you have the first move. <laughs> Wrestling genius, you're on deck. Okay, I know exactly what you're gonna do. I'm just well before I even try to do it. I'm just gonna ask. Can I do can I do WLC? Yes. <laughs> well, can I have, you can, can you can bring in the have, guys, but you're gonna need somebody else to bring in the step. Oh, so it's not two. You can't do like a okay. I thought it was okay. Close. Okay. Or you can add WLC to one of the existing <gasps> matches. I don't know how the f that, that would work. That the purpose of WLC. <laughs> Loser Leaf Town well, has a small like ladder. Barrett News Barrett versus Kevin Owens in a WLC match. I would love to see <laughs> Slade Barrett go through a tiny ass table. <laughs> no. While tiny Alex Riley and tiny Jason Albert sit at a table and scream. Cars, cars, <laughs> cars. Add WLC to Cesaro and Sheamus. <laughs> Someone's like Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla. Fighting. No, then I, then I have an idea. <laughs> Um, cars, just do what feels right. It's it's okay. Go you with can't this do whatever now. you want, cars. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My hangout was was freezing, but I, I I got the rundown. I got the rundown on that. All right, because you guys got to remember, I I laid out the challenge last week. If anybody can get me, WLC two with Hornswoggle and L three. 
Fredo on this final card, I will buy a WMS shirt from Progressive Peace. So what I'm going to do in good faith is I am going. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, I can't no. stand this suspense. <laughs> what they do? What they do for reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, cars! What before your hangout say? goes away again. What a cliffhanger! <laughs> and he froze again. Oh, no. oh, put it in no. the chat. <laughs> put it in the chat room. Put it, put it in the chat. chat. As we wait, all right, he's back. Great, 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 great. Try to say it. Say it as you're say putting it in the else. chat. Say it as you're typing. Okay, hang on, hang on. I'm trying to type this. So I'm trying. To, we trying can to hear you. We can hear you now. <laughs> good, good. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody doesn't really want you to do WLC too. The don't Google know. gods are trying to tell you this is so bad. Does not want this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Give me a second. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. You can say it. You can say it. All right. I'm I'm adding WLC stipulation to Ambrose versus Rollins. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, 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 Nobody change that at all. That's going to leave it right there. Oh, man. Ambrose, Rollins, and a tiny ladder. Cars. And we have broken, Matt. We had. We have broken Matthew. Matthew. Cars, if you added it to Cesaro and Sheamus, I would have changed Sheamus for El Torito. <laughs> Just to see Cesaro whip WLC around. Is Cesaro WLC. whip around a tiny bull in a WLC match is now my dream. What um, is going on? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I you just, know, I, I, I'm trying to imagine Dean Ambrose typing that match. Seth Rollins, we're gonna be in a WLC town. Um, all right. Um, he used a screwdriver. I'm pretty sure he'd be okay. It'd be all right. Um, okay, Sharon, you're up. Mad Mike is on deck. Who? Oh, I'm sorry, Wrestle Genius. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, Sorg, would you mind putting the board up there so I can take oh, a look? Oh, uh, okay. Well, actually, you'll be able to see it better if you click on him. Yeah, if you click on that, I don't want to. <laughs> <What the? laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't want you to do it for me. What part of that do you understand? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I feel like we're doing the daddy cast again. I would like to add. Oh, oh no. <laughs> to the uh Wade Barrett uh actually to the uh, yeah to the Wade Barrett Kevin Owens oh uh, match up there and I think that this is would really really go well with this I'd like to add Coco Beware to that match if I could. what oh no. 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 What is wrong? no he doesn't yeah. wrestle he doesn't wrestle Okay, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it's out of the realm of possibility. Wow. Wait, okay. wait, 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 he's not even doing indies? He's, he's no, seriously no. not even on the indies? No, sword. he is not doing indies. I mean, he did I'm, like I'm four sorry. years ago. I'm sorry, Russell. He is not on PittsburghWrestling.com. Actually, we would have accepted no, Virgil, but we cannot accept no, Coco. Actually, actually, <laughs> actually, I, actually, I do have a DVD with Coco Beware from no, like 2010. Who would, who would dare put Damn Virgil it. into this? Who, who would be the man who walks across that line? And puts Virgil on that board. Justin Plummer, the man who's no longer probably my... probably Justin Plummer, like, uh, pro- probably. <laughs> the man <laughs> whose name Wrestle Genius is now a misnomer. I, I have a feeling. It's <laughs> gonna happen, isn't it? Oh my God. Okay, let's let's see here. So I can't add him because he doesn't wrestle anymore. God. Um, you can make him a manager. Outside the realm of possibility, wrestling. <laughs> That's the only mistake you made. Also, the bird is Otherwise, dead. Otherwise, your your matchmaking is strong. Which you is, can which, be a guest referee. Here's here, right. Here's here's what I don't. This is this is the point. I, I'm not on board with. There are a hundred. There are a hundred rules to this game, and all of them basically add up to do whatever you want. <laughs> So you have a hundred specific rules that add up to it doesn't matter what you do. But I can't there are not nearly that many rules. Are there that many rules? 
Donate up and put them on the clock. Oh. And if you don't pick someone's suit, I'm getting the jar of mid carters. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I love that Matt was like, "There's a, lot, there's not a lot of rules to this," and then just added the extra. <laughs> <laughs> there's a jar of mid card. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's also a snake pit that you have to run through. <laughs> Next time you pull something Make out of there, it. you should scream for mid card. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, oh my god all right let's get serious about this fake game let me whisper in your ear no no do not whis- whisper in his ears El Dorito. uh <laughs> i would like to what's happening I would like to take I would like to take Roman Reigns out of that Hell in a Cell match. Oh, oh no! Oh. LB's gonna be pissed. LB there was LB's gonna, gonna be pissed. And who are you gonna put in? And I'm going to insert. Dude, keep in mind, does he have to put someone in? Do I? I don't Dude. have. Technically, yeah, I he's, have to put him in. He just has to take him out. That's funny. I'm gonna you really him. should put someone in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take Roman Reigns out. Okay. I'm gonna add. Apparently, oh, I'd like to put Coco Beware in there. That would be great. <laughs> Apparently, that's not about equal. Not, okay. I'd like to add... Man, this is tough. You haven't really thought this through, have you, Russell James? Oh, no, man. not at all. I'm completely... <laughs> like, oh, uh, well, no, he was going to make WLC too, but that move got stolen from him. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jesus. I would like to add to that. All right, I'll be right back with my jar. All right, I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. He got the jar of Midgard. <laughs> who's going to enter? Win, please. Who? I really am I'm completely blanky. Hey, hey, I just, got a, I just got a text from LB. So what's wrong? <laughs> 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 Thank you for continuing my bed. Uh, lift it up a little. Who's completely invested in Coco here? Gee, guys. Um. <laughs> well, you could do our truth. Who is the 2015 Coco? You make a decent yeah. point there. Put him in. I, I'm gonna make this wonderful. <laughs> yes. Put him in. Yes. Truth. What up? It's actually very fitting since he is the one to end the undefeated streak of Bo Dallas. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a grudge match for the ages! It's two grudge matches. It's Cena Rock so and, and Bo Dallas part, Matt. Here's the best part, Matt. You don't even have to erase all of Roman Reigns' name. You can just cross out the E I G N S. That's what he's doing. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> Thanks, Charmin. <laughs> but yeah, we have two Literally we have two big blow offs. We have the blow off to the, the third match between Rock and Cena. Once in a million lifetimes or whatever. And Archer and Bo Dallas. Oh my god, I hope uh, Bo Lunch gets Fox that win back. Tweeted, this texted me. Uh, this picture of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> right. Matt, oh, Mike, you are oh, up. So, I don't know. Wait, wait, that means he wants Virgil. No, I was going to say, that just means it's a Tuesday night. Mm. That means he wants oh, Rollins. That's true. Mad All Mike, right. you're up. Eamon's on deck. Mad Mike, this cannot be salvaged, by the way. No, no, no. Fuck it. Fuck it. Uh, it's, it's to the wolves now. It's the perfect. Boss, the boss has changed it, so I can't do anything about it. But, um, well, guys, we don't I – can, I can put Roman Reigns in a match. <laughs> oh, no. You sure can, baby girl. I, I can think of one that I would like for him to be in. Oh, and Eamon, I think you and I are on the same wavelength. Oh, We're going to have a shield blow-off and we all see two motherfuckers. Rollins, Reigns, mini tables, mini ladders, <laughs> mini chairs. We, we, were, not, we were not on the same wavelength at all. <laughs> that hurt. Bam! Oh. Bam! Wow. Hey, hey, My body is looking for that, man. Ow. Oh, man. Uh, My mind's telling me no. Oh, my, my body. body. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, we can't say that. Shit. <laughs> we can't say that. Sorry, Sorg. What? Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, well, I think we just got pulled from YouTube. Yeah, okay, you Eamon, you're up. Uh, Riz is on deck. Okay. <laughs> no, this, I don't know. 
I'm going to be honest. This move is gonna, probably going to be completely negated on my next turn, and I don't really care, but I cannot in good conscience no. uh, let my turn go by and, and have three of what we considered the most prosperous wrestlers in the WWE last year. In, in no. that, I can't. No. I can't. Take out WLC, too. Take out the stipulation. It's, yeah, Alex, it's going to put a tag on the stipulation. Alex, you can't you got to switch it. You get, it's here. You got to put it somewhere else, oh, Evan. But, but I can make it a new stipulation, right? No. Uh, no. 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 You, you can no, move you the stipulation. You can change the stipulation. You can, you can move the stipulation, stipulation or you can create the stipulation. We have too many rules. You, I, 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 I'm going to protest this because I specifically thought you said you can change the actual stipulation to the match. But you have to keep the same stipulation, so it's not here. But you have to put the stipulation somewhere else. Somewhere else, else. fuck. Oh, somewhere else. Fuck. I I know there's. You know, no. I'll go. Here's what you do. Here's what you do, Amy. Let Eamon let Eamon no, decide. No hope for the let Eamon right, decide fine. what Eamon wants. I like to watching the struggle. It's all about the struggle. You know what, Neil? I, I I got my I got my decision. No no no, fuck that. Uh, I got my decision. Uh, you know, if somebody will fill out what Mike wanted to do, that's fine. Move it to the Cesaro Sheamus match. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't in good conscience put it on the shield. I can't. I can't do that. Can't. Cesaro versus Sheamus. Oh my God! I'm Riz. pissed that I couldn't change the stipulation. Riz, but... please put El Torito in. Hey, there. Um, <laughs> hey, please, <laughs> please. Hell, hell, Cesaro's already, you know, fucking been, you know, oh, yeah, overrized since the Andre the Cesaro Giant Battle Royal. What half the tag team champions? The tag team champions. Yeah, Cesaro yeah, versus El Torito is a main event everywhere in the country. He's wrestling the Matadors in the New Day on the ne- on WrestleMania instead of winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Riz, he's gone Thank down. You. Like he's won last year. He's also a tag team champion. Hey. Who cares? My hangout pro. So what was the move? Fuck. We all see now Cesaro Sheamus. All right. Um, Riz, you're up. Sorg is batting cleanup for all of Mayhem Mania. For okay. all of Mayhem Mania. Oh, wow. All right. No pressure. Responsibility, sir. Under no. pressure. Hey, uh, Matt Carlin. Hey, Riz. Are you are we doing like the? Are you randomizing the uh, the mid Carter thing? Am I getting you the jar of mid Carters? Are you are you are you, are you are you right now? You're choosing to take the jar off the screen. Uh, no, not you're at this moment. Me. I mean, I have I still have the blocks right here. If you want me to, I can pull <laughs> you know one. I can pull a name if you need me to. You know what? I'm feeling frisky. Riz. Oh no. Riz. There's a cream Give for me that. the mid carter, sir. Riz. Oh wow. Riz. Oh wow, he taking the chance. Riz, if you're Riz do... pick a number between one and ten. If you're gonna do this, do the right thing. Seven. I had imagine a lot of those guys already have to be booked. Yep, that guy's already booked. Oh fuck you. <laughs> <Pick it up. laughs> Pick a number between one and nine. Oh, man. This is going to take forever. Uh, three. Hopefully not. Three. Horizontal. Ah! Good news. Anybody want to take a guess? Ooh. Ooh. Um, uh, Zack Ryder. It's Adam Rose. Horizontal. Everybody ready? Fandango! Fandango! Oh, good guess. Oh, excellent guesses. Riz, you pulled... Eric Rowan. No! Oh, okay. All oh, right. no. All right. Now we have to listen to 80,000 people in silence for his entrance. <laughs> or just Eamon. Uh, just so, really like his music, Eamon. We were going to get that with a Brad Maddox match. <clears throat> oh, please. So, um, Sorg, I'm sorry. Take out Steamboat and Sting. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take out Steamboat and Sting. Riz, I'm asking you to reconsider. No. Okay. Thank you. Wait, no, wait, no. Time out, time out, time out. Wait. Just take out Steamboat. Riz, don't do what? this. Steamboat and Sting. Oh. I want, I want Steamboat and Sting out. Oh, no. And I'm going to replace it with... This match was Danny Glover. All right. <laughs> He's too old for that shit. Not Ricky Steamboat. Yeah, it was one week away from retirement. I'm going to... Now I can add. Let me use Coco. I can add somebody for a tag team, right? Player. 
Oh yeah, as long as you can do whatever you want. Oh, no. Riz. Oh, no, I know what he's going to do. The Wyatt family over. reunites. Okay. Uh, no. Nope. 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 The, the, the tag of the trailer. Eric Rowan and uh, Luke okay. Harper. And they will battle. New day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Um, no, he can't Ryback, book them. You know what? No. Ryback and Ziggler. Ziggler's, Ziggler's, already on here. Ziggler's already on there. That's right. So, uh, fucking. Uh, how about the Vaude Villain? Riz, how about the Vaude I know Villain? there's a team that's not on there. Enzo and Cass. How about the no, assumption? we're not gonna have the we're not gonna have another NXT takeover here. How about um the dubstep cowboys? No, fuck oh. them. How about the goddamn <laughs> Usos, Riz? This is easy. Do not try to sway persuade me, Damon. Go, go, be I'm, not not so, I'm, I'm a high energy. I'm a high energy. I'm just making it mad to you know <laughs> How about the uh, new foundation? How about how about El Torito and Born How about you give, how about you give an answer? <laughs> how about everybody shut up so I can answer? This uh, it's okay. Event. No, it, it's not okay, Alex. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll take Eric Rowan and Luke Harper versus ah uh, the Usos. What the hell? Oh god damn it, Riz. This is strong. Dude, those That's guys are in matches. Fuck you guys. Uh, Eamon likes something that I picked. I know. I can't believe it happened. That usually means you're wrong. Oh. Wow. <laughs> what, wait, what was Love it? Love you, Eamon. <laughs> that can also be said for a lot of things. Oh, here. WrestleMania season makes Amy one cranky, cranky old man. Salty Amy. So is that is Salty that Amy. is that is that the Russell Wire family against the Usos? Is that, did I catch that? I'm sorry. I was on yeah, screen. it is the... Um, yes, that's I'm the making Wyatt deals family. over here. Damn it. Wyatt family do, reunion I was gonna do something, Usos. I was going to do something with Harper there. Um, nope. But since we're down there, let's see. Daniel Bryan's already taken. So the over here is the last move. It's the last move ever. I remind you that the stipulations are Man. still out there. Do we I all just... see two is still attached to Cesaro versus Sheamus. We all see... And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the two the strongest yeah. men in the company have to work with many tables, many lyrics, and many chairs. Switch about, switch that's about. A, sword. Come that's on. That's a that's a WrestleMania moment right there. If I ever saw one, you um, Henry somewhere. Sorg, you could book the Damn big it. show. I was gonna maybe throw. No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I was close. The, the jar of main eventers no one uses. What? Yes, There's sword. a jar of main eventers. Where's Randy Orton Sorg? Right, how, how about Orton versus Sting? Yeah, I was gonna say Sting. Uh, that, that's actually no, I won't let you influence me in such a way. Yeah, why? Why are we all asking? I'm not it, gonna let you to influence me. The person describing I'm just it. Reminding Sorg of who is not but, Well, if you guys want to be so indecisive. <laughs> and uh, plus, well, like, it, let me tell you. Not good. It's not good audio if someone's just saying they're thinking. Let me tell you. Sorry. Let me tell you what I was going to do. Exactly. And hopefully it's sparse. Because I was going to take the okay. sixty the sixty minute woman match, Iron Woman match, and put it on Steamboat and Sting. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> so <laughs> let me tell Riz. Let me tell Riz what he ruined. Was that okay? I feel, um, I feel better now. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take your match. What? I'm going to take your match. <laughs> I'm going to take it from oh, you. No. I'm going to take it from you, Riz. I'm going to kill it. How spiteful! All these other matches to kill, and he's coming for yours, Riz. It's personal. Because it's going to be Harper and Rowan against the Usos. Oh, you're adding on. Okay. I was, I was scared there. And I don't think there anywhere else is. Wait, did we, did we just have this conversation? Is Cesaro and Kid somewhere else? Yeah, no, Cesaro, 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 Cesaro is stuck in a WLC two match with Sheamus. Sword. <laughs> wait, that's the WLC. Cesaro, Sheamus is the WLC. I thought that's it was the Shield guys. No, oh, it was. Cesaro and Sheamus are still there. Sacrificed oh, okay. himself to I'm throw so, the stipulation out of another round. Heyman so decided to fuck up dreams. Okay, that, that, that messed up my dream too. That messed up my dream too. 
Um, oh, damn. Oh, damn. Because that, that's, that's actually, actually okay. You know what to do, Zorg. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. So here, comes, oh. here comes everybody's telling Zorg what to do. Oh. This is the part of the show where, he, uh, where Angel hey. LB and Devil LB appear on Zorg's shoulders and tell him. And they're, bold saying, they're, 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 they're both saying to suck his dick. Um, you know what? <laughs> All right. I'm going to take Riz's match and I'm going to add Slater Gator. Whoa. 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 <laughs> oh my god, Bama and Night Sword cracks a homer. I love that we're not adding the primetime players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's okay. Darren Young's uh then Darren Young's at ringside. Or oh if I had a special stipulation, I'd make Darren Young the referee. Do you like sword? Be right back. I'm gonna go donate a dollar to Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Carlitz, real quick, give us the rundown. What do we have after right, that? What has changed? Don't, don't give me the graduates. I'm going to tell you the way things are going to roll, roll out here. Steve Button Sting was going to graduate until Riz killed it. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> All right, we've got three open spots here. These eight matches will be put into a poll on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, and your vote, Wrestling Mayhem Show fans, will determine which three of these eight matches advances and graduates to the permanent Mayhem Mania card, and that will be the final eight match card. Here are the eight matches you will be voting on. Yes. Will, the, will the fourth match on there be the kickoff match? Um, I, I don't know how we're going to do the lineup yet. We got to okay. okay. figure out timing and things like things. that. And the Kid Rock concert in the middle, and you know, we got <laughs> yeah, we have, no, some, look, we we'll have to surprise time. everybody with everybody with with uh, the Funky Dactyls dancing to. Let somebody better call your mom. Oh, that's, yeah, that's what happens with the 60-woman uh, Iron Man match is that 45 minutes of it's a Kid Rock concert. <laughs> Ew. Wind is um, here, are the, here are the eight matches we need you guys to vote on and uh, to show your support for or lack thereof. Triple H versus Brad Maddox. Ray White versus Finn Balor. Bad News Barrett versus Kevin Owens. We L C two Cesaro versus Sheamus. Yeah. Hell in a cell. John Cena versus R-Truth versus The Rock versus Bo Dallas. <laughs> Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. This is the best thing that happened during this entire You're round. Welcome. Losers leave town. The Lucha Dragons versus The Undertaker and Kane. And finally, the Harford, or I'm sorry, the White Family Reunion versus The Usos versus Slater Gator. This is the best card ever. <laughs> it's close. I, I, um, I love that we don't have Sting on this card anymore. He was the big cross. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's done. Just pointing wow. it out there. We wow. could we could have had Sting and Ric Flair as a tag team. Well, anyways, uh, Matt <laughs> Lawrence is going to Sting and Taker. Matt Lawrence is going to clean all this up. It's going to be over at uh, Mainstream Matt One T dot com, and uh, and we'll continue from there and say that it'll be on the Facebook group right for Wrestling Mayhem Show for the voting. Yep, mm-hmm. we'll get the um, poll put up there, Sorg, and I'll. Uh, I'm sure you'll pin it to the top of the page so uh, it sticks up there, and we'll let you guys vote until, like, Friday. You'll have until Friday to get your votes in. Sounds good. And then, Sounds um, good. We'll go from there. We'll have a final eight match card, and we'll show what we do with that. But as far as, like, these shenanigans, the Mayhem Mania shenanigans, this was the final round. So Thank thanks, everybody, God. who participated and played and supported and didn't make fun of the rules too much. <laughs> <laughs> and um, never, I never heard of that guy before in my life. Nope, no idea. Oh. Um, uh, Sorg, thanks for letting uh, this thing uh, go on as long as it did. This will be but, amazing. Uh, I always think it's time to like, quit while you're ahead. So. I don't know what we're going to do for the segment after WrestleMania now. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I know exactly what we're going to do. Hmm. Slammiversary Mania. No. No, no. Actually, we have another idea. We do have one idea Same at least for a couple TNA, of days. Guys. Uh, I did, yeah. my, uh, oh, my on God. that note, Matt. Alex oh. Cars, he's at. Starman, TNA would book Coco Beware. Alex Cars, he's at uh, uh, Power to. Late. Yes, late. I'm yes. I'm sorry, I'm blanking. It's late. <laughs> Power to the smarks.com, of course. <laughs> I just I just froze. I'm sorry. Uh and you got the pickums. Yep. Got the pickums. Pickums. Uh get make your uh, predictions for upcoming events. I'm gonna I'm going to be updating the current standings uh this week. Mm-hmm. Uh I need to check whether indie shows are between now and WrestleMania, but otherwise, WrestleMania is going to be the next uh, show where pick'em points are in play. Uh, basically, you're going to put a point uh, total to each uh, match that you're 
choosing. You got to pick a different one, different point thing for each match. But uh, yeah, score points and win some prizes. Winner for each month is going to win a free digital download through Sorgatron Media. Yep. And the winner of the entire season is going to win a T-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees. So. Ooh. Nice. All right, go check it out. And uh, also, Wrestle Genius. Follow him on Twitter. Hashtag Free Coco. Free Coco. Free Coco. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Mainstream Matt on Twitter and the Block Spot. Also, check out uh, at Mad Mike483. He joins me on the Rambling Movie Minute and all kinds of other stuff at the E Riz on uh, InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, Amen to please joins me on Indie Mayhem Show. We're talking with Pedro DeLuca, the great ring announcer for AIW, uh, <laughs> IWC, and uh, VOW. Um, who else is in here with me? I don't even know anymore. I, I have an update. Riz, what do you got? I did. I did text uh, Mr. Lunchbox, mm-hmm. and he really said uh, first text who, and then next text right after that who did it. I have not responded yet because I am scared. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> and on a side note, Ed Burke has been listening to us a while and wants to know what the WLC two references to. <laughs> I, I am telling him right now. I'm informing him. Of, okay. Uh, okay. That um, glorious that is TLC. That is beautiful. Find it on the WWE Network, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it might be on YouTube. Now I think about it. So, I still remember watching the first one. It was great. It was amazing. Uh, uh, um, but you can find us. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can uh, subscribe to us on audio and video, all kinds of forums. And you can also contact us at 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com <laughs> is the email address. And you can join us live at Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com every Tuesday about 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm rolling straight through until midnight with the wrestling talk. Ooh, even closer what? this this week. Um, and so, so much more. Thank you, everybody. Stick around late with us on the live stream and, and live in the show um, all night long. And uh, with so many other shows going on uh, around the network, the uh, Midweek Wars, the Raw Wrap-Up, I uh, got 30 Days of WrestleMania going on right now. And, of course, the uh, Mayhem Minutes where we're talking about all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's the thing I forgot about. What would you learn from wrestling this week? Yeah, I was going to say. Thank you. I was going to say. I'm like, it's kind of late, right? and the show has run super long. Um, he's been laying it till the end. I was like, he's, I know. What he's okay, doing. real quick, real, real quick, guys. Uh, Antonio Garza learned from the Facebook uh, that you're not allowed to have fun in WWE events and that gender bender WWE would be pretty awesome. Huh. Uh, Kyle Turner. Uh, knows that uh, Ray- Ray- Roman Reigns believes that and that Jamie Noble is the best secret weapon ever easily concealed in the pocket. I learned... <laughs> hmm. hmm. I, 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 I... Wow. Okay. Um, I learned... I learned about WWE. I, I learned about fandom of wrestling and how important it is. <laughs> Ed Burke says thank you. Um, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned Alex Riley has a uh, has, is just filled with rage. Yes, he is. Uh, Matt Carlin's. What did you learn? Emotional rage. God, what did I learn? I don't know if I learned anything this week. So come back and look behind Mad you, Mad Mike. <laughs> look at all the mess you did. That's what you were doing. I, I learned that John Cena is part of the Tea Party. Mm. <laughs> well, there's that too. Uh, the Wrestle Genius. I learned that there is no justice for Coco Beware in this world. No, there is not. Amen. I learned that I've never had such a blissful memory of past wrestling than watching that six-man tag match from Raw and how it reminded me of a year, year and a half ago of WWE when shit was really good. Matt? I learned that where um, the New Day makes rhythmic clapping seem kind of lame, Cesar can kid can make it cool. And Alex of Power to the Smarts.com. I learned I learned that Sting is secretly Kevin Dunn because he gets to decide when Monday Night Raw ends. Remember how last week's show ended at like eight or ten, fifteen minutes past the uh, third hour? Sting's like, nope, we're ending this at five minutes past the hour. And yeah. Then we didn't get an interview with the winner of the last match because there was no last match. So Sting is Kevin Dunn. 
All right, and with that, uh, I said all the rest of the things. What? Hashtag free cocoa. Hashtag free cocoa. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.